G'day everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now, outcome first list creation is what I'm calling this, and it's the new uh, experience that's rolling out for you to be able to be to create Microsoft lists really from the outcome first approach. So we're gonna dive deep into the different options that are going to be available for you to create your lists, and we'll step through each one of those in detail. So we can see on the screen here that I'm in the the, I'll call it the Microsoft Lists app. So when I click on the create new option here, we're now presented with how would you like to start? So rather than creating a new list or having to understand, I'm trying to create a new form, I need somebody to fill out a form, rather than having to think about um, or understand that you need to create a list first, add columns, all that sort of stuff, we can actually create a form right from the outset. So natively, instinctively here, we've got the default list. Same as always, we can create a blank list. There's no need to go through that. I'm sure we are all over how to create a list. Now, these four options are relatively new. While you could create these after you've created a list, now we actually do that side of things first. So if I wanna create a form, I don't need to create the list first. I can just click on form and say, uh, what's the form that I'm trying to create? I wanna create an expense claim form. I can then pick the site because I'm using the lists app. I get to choose whether I store it as a, as a my list or I can add this list to a an existing SharePoint site that I've got access to. I can show it in the uh, the list in the site navigation. Now, what's gonna happen here behind the scenes, even though I'm presented by uh, with creating a form, I'm actually creating a list in the background. So when we go and start to add our fields to our form, it's actually also creating some, some columns in the underlying list. So let's add a new form. So we'll go expense claim as the form title. And we can start adding my. Um, we can start adding all of the fields now. So I've got the title. I might have the expense type or category, uh, where we might say travel. We might say accommodation. We might say uh, entertainment as a few expense types. Then we might also add a currency field for amount. And we might also then add, maybe we'll add uh, an image column here where we will say receipt, okay? So now what we've got is we've created our form. We can add a logo here as well if we wanted to add our logo for this form. Now remembering these forms, we can actually create multiple forms now for different audiences if we wanted to as well, all right? So I've got my expense claim, I've got a simple form here. Now I can also, if I wanted to add some logic here or some branching, then if I had different fields that I wanted to apply or show based on the, for example, the expense type, then I could then uh, use this branching logic to actually uh, direct the user and show the right things for the expense type. We've also on the right hand side, we can show and hide our columns if we wanted to as well on different forms. We've got our themes. So we can change our color scheme for our form. We've got four that are presented for us um, by default from Microsoft, or we could create our own, all right? So if we go back, we've got our settings, we've got a start and end date if we wanted to have an open window where we wanted to accept uh, responses in, or and also I can choose to get notified whenever somebody submits a, um, uh, an entry into this form and I've got my uh, text here or the message after somebody adds an item to this form or fills this form out, that's what will be presented to the user. Then I could copy the link and I could send that form out. 
All right, so again, that's separating out the form from the underlying list as well. It means that a user now doesn't have to go to the list, click on new item, they can just fill out, you can send them this form, we can add a tile on a, on, a, on your SharePoint site, link them to the form. There's lots of different um, options and opportunities with this new forms experience as well. Now we can create, uh, preview this form as we're creating it. So we can open it in a new tab, we can see what this looks like in the browser as well. Now you can see here that the UI and the user experience is really nice, okay? We've got our drop downs, we've got our title here, we've got the amount and we could also add an image. Now, if you're on a mobile, this add an image, we could use our device camera for this experience. So in the example of an expense claim, if I've got my receipt, I can take a photo of the receipt and then actually complete this form directly from my mobile phone as well. All right, so another added advantage there, we can use those that device capability there. So forms, you can see here, here's the list. Now I'm in the list experience. Here are the um, the columns or the fields that I added to that form. Now I am in the list experience, but if I jump over to the SharePoint site, I'll just hit the refresh buttons. So remembering I chose to uh, create this in this site. Here is my uh, here is my f uh, list here, and when I hit new item, you'll notice that I don't get that form though, right? you will see that I get the uh, the out of the box SharePoint experience, all right? But I do have this forms option here, and here is the form that I just created, all right? So new item, we get the default experience, but we do have the forms option there as well. All right, back into Microsoft Lists. Let's create a different type. Well, let's say we're, we're looking for a gallery as our outcome. Again, no need to understand or work out. Yes, we can create a list and we need to configure it and all that sort of stuff. I just wanna start with a gallery. So if I click Create Gallery and I will give this a name, and again, I'm going to set, pop this into the same site. I'm gonna show it in the navigation and I'll hit create. Behind the scenes, it's creating a list for me in that SharePoint site. You can see that the view is already created as a gallery view. I can add a new item here as well, where I've got my title, uh, I've got my image, and I've got my attachment. All right, so it's just a default blank list that's been configured as in a gallery view. Now, if I wanted to add more columns here, then if I go to all items, you can see that I'm back in my traditional list. I can add a column. Maybe we want to have a description. All right, so if I go add a multiple lines of text column and description, we can do that. Let's maybe add a date column as well. Um, date taken, because this is going to be um, for our images, all right? So we'll pop in a date column there, and now we've got a couple of additional columns. I'll pop back to my gallery view, but you can see that these aren't shown on these cards, all right? So what we can do under this view is we can format the current view and we can add or remove fields or we can edit the current view. So I wanna format this view because I wanna use the card designer. I wanna show some other things on my card, all right? So we can see if I hit the refresh button, we can see that we've got our different options if we wanted to show our different uh, different values or different fields on the card itself. So we'll wait for this to load. All right, so if we go to format current view and go to card designer, now what you'll see here is that I don't see those other fields, right? So if I go back and I, what I need to do is I need to actually edit the current view and I am going to say, where are the fields that I, I had date taken and I'm also going to add description, okay? So I'm going to go down and click okay. And now I'm taken back to the SharePoint site here. So you'll notice that change in, uh, in location, same list, etc. but it's taken me to a different location. Remembering previously, I created the list and inside of that site. I do have that list here. I'll just hit refresh, but I'm in the Microsoft Lists app here, not in the SharePoint site. 
Now you'll notice what happened when I added those columns to that view. You'll see that those have been added to that card. So if I go back up into gallery and I go back into format current view, what we'll see when this loads is that we'll see that we've got now, we've got the ability because those fields are in view, then we've got the ability to change what does show and what doesn't show on those cards. So if I don't want the description, I simply untick and you can see that that dynamically disappears. I click save and now I've got a different card view. Just to reiterate, I'm in the lists experience here in the lists app, but it's exactly the same here. If I'm in the SharePoint site, you'll see that that has now disappeared and I've got that gallery view that I've updated in the lists app. It's just that I chose to deploy and create this in this SharePoint site. I've got those two experiences that I can interact with the exact same list. All right. Heading back to Microsoft Lists and let's click on Create New. Now the next one we've got here is Calendar. All right, so if I click on Calendar, let's go and um, give this a name of Calendar. We'll pop it in the same SharePoint site and we'll hit Create. So again, starting from the outcome in mind, I want a, I want a calendar. I don't want a list, I want a calendar. So you can see that I'm presented now with my calendar. I can click on Add New Item, all right, Default, stock standard, default columns here. I've got a title, I've got a start date, and I've got an end date. All right, so I've got event one. Let's go for a start date of today. Uh, maybe an end date of then. I'm not gonna add any attachments and I'll hit save. So we can see that that's been added and there's the event there. I, um, and I've got the view that's been created in the top right hand corner. Now I've also got all items, right? So I've got that view, the default view of all items still uh, where I can add columns if I wanted to. I've got my calendar view. If I click the drop down, I can change the view. So if I want it by month, if I want it by work week, if I want it by day, I've got my default views already created for me there in the drop down. I still, again, like the other uh, experience we had before, I can format our current view as well. I've got conditional formatting and it's applying to that particular view. Because remembering in this drop down, we've got month, week, work, week, and day. Now they're different views, all right? So you can apply different formatting to different views, all right? I'll go back into the drop down, uh, and then we can add or remove fields if we wanted to as well from uh, from this view columns. So if I wanted to see uh, add, uh, let's say created, or maybe we'll go created by, then I've got the option there to also add that field to uh, to there as well. All right. So that's the calendar view. All right, or the calendar experience. Now, if I click on create new again, the last one that we've got is a board experience. So maybe I'm doing some project management or um, I want to be able to sort my items by cards and buckets, similar to like we do in Planner. That's where this comes into play. So if I click on board, I'm going to pop this in the same SharePoint site again, and that's going to create my list with the, this board view, all right? You can see that I've got buckets. So I might say, uh, let's say backlog. Uh, we might then go um, in progress and we might go uh, blockers, all right? So we've got a couple of buckets that we've got set up. Now we've got our unassigned. Now I can just drag and drop these cards into the, um, into the right bucket, okay? Now behind the scenes here, what's happened with our board view is we've got two columns by default. We've got a title and we've got a board choice. Now this is our choice column, right? So you can see uh, I've got in progress blockers and backlog as our choices for our board, all right? So if I flip back into board, you'll see that they're the three buckets that I've got um, for, for me to choose from, okay? So again, here I've got I can edit the items if I wanted to. I can drag and drop these items. I've got all items here as well. If I wanted to add a column, I could also add a column. So let's add a choice column for category. We might go uh, Outlook. We might go Copilot and we'll go SharePoint as our categories. 
and we'll save that as well. All right, so now I'm just going to select these two. I'll edit this in grid view. So remembering we've still got this same this same experience that we can have, right? So we'll go Copilot and we'll go SharePoint as our categories. We'll exit our grid view and now we'll go back to board. All right, so we're back into our board view. We could format the current view if we wanted to as well. Same as what we did before. I've got my board choice and I can hit save. Now that's not really that relevant in a board view, but you can notice here that we still, because we need to go add or remove fields, if I wanna add the category to be in view, I can do that if I wanted to. I can then format the current view, I can edit the card, and now I can have the category on that card because it is in the view and it's available for me to select, okay? so. That is the board experience. If I jump back into lists and I'll go create new, you'll see that there is really outcome driven list creation. Do I wanna create a form, a gallery, a calendar, or a board? Uh, they're the outcomes that I want, that's the result that I want, uh, or I can create a simple list. Now, if I'm in the SharePoint site though, and I jump into this SharePoint site, you can see I've got these uh, on the left-hand side here. And as I said, I'll just reiterate, it's exactly the same list, exactly the same experience, just accessing it from a different way. I do also have the ability to create lists forms here from the SharePoint site. Now, when I create lists forms, you see that it's only the form. I don't get the option to create the different types um, like we saw in the lists app, it's only the form. All right, so just something to be aware of there. If you do want the other experiences, then you need to be in the Microsoft lists app, not in the SharePoint experience. That will only get you the ability to give you or create a form, all right? So there we go. I hope that brings you some value today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.